In a previous video, I described how to use the hash set, a collection class that lets you store references to objects and ensures that each reference is only stored once. Now I'm going to show how to use tree set. The tree set implements everything the hash set does, but it also keeps everything in an order that you can control by implementing an interface called comparable in the class that you're storing. I'm going to start by creating an instance of the tree set class and then I'll show you how to code so that objects are stored in an order that you control. In this class, I've declared three instances of subclasses of the Olive class, Ligurio, Kalamata, and Piccoline. Notice that I haven't put them explicitly in any alphabetical order. I've put L before K, P at the end, but the goal is to show eventually that when I add objects to a tree set, that they'll automatically be alphabetized. I'll start with the cursor below the existing code inside the main method. And I'll declare an instance of the tree set class. Just like every other collection, it uses the diamond operator to let you declare the type of objects that will be stored. And I'll be storing instances of the olive class. I'll name the object set, and I'll instantiate it with the constructor method. Now I'll add the object to the set. I'll call set.add. First, I'll add the pick line. That would be the last one alphabetically. Then I'll add Kalamata. And then finally, I'll add the Ligurio olive. Now, if I try to run the code at this point, I'm going to get an error. And the reason is because objects that you add to a tree set are expected to implement an interface called comparable. I'll click yes and look at the debug perspective, and I won't get very helpful information right off the bat. So to find out what might have gone wrong, I'll terminate the application. I'll go back to my Java perspective. And I'm going to wrap this code inside a try-catch block. I'll create the try-catch. Then I'll cut and paste the existing code into the try-catch section. And then within the catch section, I'll output the error message. I'll run the code again. And I see that the error message is that the pick line class cannot be cast to the comparable interface. So it's up to me to implement that interface in my class. Now, I need this interface in all three of the classes, Ligurio, Kalamata, and Pickline. But because they all are subclassed from Olive, I can implement it there, and all of the subclasses will inherit the new methods. So I'll go to my Olive class. The first step is to tell the compiler that this class will implement the comparable interface. I'll add the implements keyword. And then I'll type the beginning of the interface name, and I'll choose it from java.lang. The comparable interface uses generic notation, and it's up to you to indicate what data type is going to be compared. I'll be comparing olives to olives. Now I'll move the cursor down to below the existing code. I'll go to the menu and choose Source, Override Implement Methods. And here's the method of the comparable interface that I have to implement. It's called ComparedTo. I'll click OK and that adds the compareTo method to my class. The compareTo method receives an instance of the object that's being compared, and it's up to me as the programmer to define the logic that will be used to compare this object to another one. Each time an object is added to the tree set, the tree set will loop through all of its objects and resort them for you. This results in the tree set being slower than, say, the hash set, but it's a valuable trick that it knows how to do. The compareTo method will return an integer value of negative one, zero, or positive one. And I'll show you how to compare strings and return the appropriate value. I'm going to compare objects based on their olive name properties. So I'm going to remove the to-do comment, and I'll create a string called s1, and I'll get that value from the current object using this olive name. Then I'll create another string called s2, and I'll get that value from o.olive name. The O represents the object that's being passed into the method during the sorting process. Then I'll change the return statement to s1.compare to s2. So in this case, I'm comparing strings to strings. I'm comparing the names of classes to names of classes. If I prefer, I could also use the all of name, which is actually an implementation of an enumerator in this case, and so I'd have to call all of name dot as string. But this logic will work. So now I'll go back to main.java, and I'll run the code again, and I don't get any error messages. So it seems to be working, but now I want to make sure that things are being ordered the way I expect. 
So I'll place the cursor down here after the try catch, and I'm going to simply output the set to the console. I'll save and run the code, and it all comes out alphabetically. Kalamata, Ligurio, and Piccolot. And to show that this is different from how things would work in a hash set, I'll copy this line of code, and I'll go back to a class that I already have in this project called useHashSet. And it's adding objects that are also not in alphabetical order. I'll paste in that line of code that outputs the set. And I'm going to reorder the calls to the add methods here, so that I'm calling the pick line first, the Ligurio, and then the Kalamata. And here's what happens with the hash set. The order of objects in the hash set is not guaranteed. In this case, it came out first Ligurio, then Kalamata, then pick line. But I'll run the code again, and each time I run it, you might see that the order changes. This time I got Piccoline, then Kalamata, then Ligurio. I'll run it again, and this time Ligurio is first. And I'm showing that the hash set doesn't guarantee anything. I'll go back to main.java, and here I'm using the tree set, and in this case it will always come out in the same order. Always alphabetical, because I wrote the code that's doing the comparison and that is executing the sorting. So, the comparison between hash set and tree set is that hash set is faster, but the tree set lets you sort your data automatically as you add, remove, and otherwise organize your objects.